Alrighty, I've seen a Jalen Walker video, and as someone who's generally very critical of police and the laws that they enforce, uh, I have to say I, I don't immediately see anything super wrong with what happened here. Uh, yes, I know it's summertime during an election year, and so it's time for race riots, but I, I don't know why the media and the BLM folks can't ever pick uh, a better example of a uh, police shooting to get upset again about. I mean, I see plenty of them. I and mean, if you follow, you know, sites like the Free Thought Project, they post them up all the time, really bad things the cops do. But for some reason, they always try and pick on situations that are just not once you look you peel past the first layer of the onion, it's not it's not it's not what they say. Now, maybe I guess what they're betting on is they just want to pick the story that they can get the most salacious and uh, inflammatory headlines out of and just assume that nobody's ever going to click on the story or look at any of the facts or watch the video. And if that's the case, then I guess that this is uh, a good uh, story for them. What I keep hearing is that, oh my gosh, an unarmed black man was shot 60 times in the back by the police, yet you have all these white mass shooters that kill dozens of people and they get apprehended, uh, you know, without being shot. And when they say that, they give you uh, the impression that, uh, you know, a, a cop just sort of sat there and dumped four mags into him. One after the other, you know, he emptied his gun, dropped the mag, popped a new one in and emptied that one and then did that two more times uh, to shoot him 60 times and make sure he was really dead. While I watched the video, turns out this guy was involved in a high-speed chase, and the reason why he was shot 60 times, before I get to even have, you know, any of the other details, um, the reason why he was shot 60 times is because he was being chased by five cops, and they all opened fire on him at the same time. So each one of them dumped their mag. People who have... Uh, been in these sorts of situations before where you have to use a gun. I haven't, um, where I ha I've never had to use a gun to defend myself or in any sort of situation like this. So I can't say that but this with first-hand experience, but we see this over and over again, not just with police, but also in uh, self-defense situations. People tend to dump the mag when they feel like there's a threat. They keep shooting uh, until they're out of ammo. And when they run out, they, make, they have to pause for a second, and then they realize, oh, the guy's dead. I don't need to load a new mag and keep shooting. So that's what you had here. You had four or five cops uh, all uh, um, uh, see him as a threat at the same time while they were chasing him. They Because they were chasing him for a little bit, and then uh, it, all of a sudden they all opened fire at once. Now, what the official story there is that they said, oh, well, he, he reached for his belt. Or something like that, reach for his waist, looked like he was going to grab a gun, and that's why they all shot him. And they all must have seen that or something like that. Either that or the first guy started shooting and the rest of them, uh, you know, uh, went along with it. Because as soon as you hear the gunshot, you don't know, okay, is that him shooting at us or is that us shooting at him? So all, all the cops just, you know, unloaded into him. Now we're told that this uh, upstanding uh, member of the community, Jalen Walker, was unarmed. Uh, however, uh, he—it turns out he just left his gun on the seat of his car when he ran out. Um, and they claim that he was shooting out of the car uh, during the high-speed chase. And they cite some uh, closed-circuit television uh, footage, which has no audio, uh, to show the muzzle flash. I can't confirm 100% that that's what you're seeing, but it certainly does look like there is a flash coming out of his car, um, which very well might be muzzle flash. And if that's true, if he was shooting out of his car, well, then the cops would have every reason to believe that he is armed with a gun when he got out of that car uh, after the chase, you know, ended. That part of the chase, the road chase ended. Um, they would have every reason to believe that he's got a gun. And so if they're chasing him on foot, and it looks like he's going to grab a gun, the prudent decision would be to draw your own weapon and shoot him before he shoots any of you. Now, I haven't been able to ascertain why exactly they were chasing this guy, 
Um, but considering that he was wearing a ski mask when he jumped out of the car, uh, I would imagine that it had something to do with a robbery uh, or a burglary of some sort. Now, do I know that for a fact? No. But we have a guy who was uh, in a high-speed chase, shooting out his window um, at the police, who then got out of his car wearing a ski mask and ran on foot. I think that at this point, when we don't have all the information, that's probably the most reasonable explanation for what happened here. Now, do I know that for 100%? No, I think just like with all uh, homicides, you know, this should be investigated and they should find out exactly uh, what happened here. But what is not reasonable at this point is to assume that this was some choir boy, uh, a, a DoorDash driver, I think they're calling him, just like they call the, what's his name in Georgia, the gentle jogger, uh, or just a jogger, just jogging. And uh, they called uh, Mike Brown in, uh, in Missouri, they called him the gentle giant. I don't think that this humble DoorDash driver uh, was necessarily at this point, this is not my impression, I don't think that he was a fine upstanding member of the community. Does that mean that he deserved to die? No, of course not. I think most people don't deserve to die. But the most likely explanation at this point as to why he ended up dead is that Jalen Walker was fleeing the scene of a robbery or burglary of some sort. He was armed and he did want, not want to be caught by the police. And so he ran away. He shot at them. And he did as much as he could to present himself to them as a threat. And as a result, uh, he was killed uh, in the process of being apprehended. Now, I'm not going to shed a bunch of tears over a burglar or a robber who was fleeing the police and was shooting at them. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to cry over his death. I'm sorry. You know, it's not that I think his life's worthless. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, in a normal society, that is something that, uh, and it's sad, but it's to be expected. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Now, I don't know for 100% that that's what happened. That's just what it looks like so far. So I would not be out in the streets rioting to defend his honor. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Now, maybe once we get all the information, it will turn out uh, that uh, this guy was just wearing a ski mask because it was really cold out uh, that that June that that evening in late June. Now, do I think it was really cold that evening in late June in Akron, Ohio? I don't know. I mean, I would doubt it. But I, you know, I I don't spend much time in June in Akron, Ohio. Maybe it's still cold there. Maybe Akron, Ohio, uh, is was sucked through a wormhole and is actually in the southern hemisphere and is experiencing the dead of winter and this guy doesn't have heat in his car so he has to drive with his windows down to keep them from frosting over and so he needed the ski mask to keep his face warm that is a possibility i can't rule that out but it seems pretty improbable at this point at this point the most likely explanation again is that this guy was a robber or burglar he was armed he was shooting at people, and he got taken down. And so I think it would be a tragedy, uh, you know, for his family who loved him. Uh, you know, even if your family member makes a mistake and does something wrong, you know, you still don't want to see their life ended. It's still going to be sad for you as a mother or a brother or a father uh, or a sister. But the general American population... Uh, shouldn't be upset if this was actually a case of the police actually defending their community from uh, a violent criminal. I mean, police are supposed to use violence to dispense with violent criminals. That's why they have the ability to use force. This is what cops have guns for. It's to catch people like this. And if those people 
you know, turn, uh, try to you know, resist by using force, apprehension, uh, they run the risk of getting themselves killed. And so, again, could be po- totally possible that the police had the wrong guy and that uh, this guy was totally innocent. He had no idea where he was being chased. Uh, or maybe, you know, maybe it's a real extreme situation. He knows these cops. He knows that these cops are out to kill him. And if they caught him, they would have lynched him. You know, maybe there, maybe there's more context like that that I don't know about. But as of right now, it's hard for me to just assume that. Maybe he was fleeing and shooting at those cops because he he feared for his life. He thought, you know what? If I can just get away, maybe I'll survive, even if I have to be a fugitive. But if these cops catch me, they'll kill me on the spot. Maybe that's what he thought. And so his uh, preemptive resistance to that lynching, um, you know, that may have just ended up being the justification on film that the police needed uh, to justify uh, what they had already decided to do by killing him. Now, is that a possibility I can rule out? No, not 100%, but it seems to me rather unlikely. I think that that's a pretty, um, that's a pretty extreme scenario. And I don't think it happens every day in America. Now, some people do think that that is quite plausible and that that probably does happen every day in America. But for now, uh, if this takes off, I think that this could end up being dumber than the George Floyd riots. You know, the George Floyd thing is a gray area. Um, It's not, I don't think that uh, anybody 100% proved their case one way or another. In fact, I think legally, um, uh, what's his name, Chauvin had a decent case for getting off because I I do think that the cops have a lot of latitude under the law and didn't seem like he went against uh, what the authority that was granted to him. But still with that said, what happened to to old to uh, old Mr. Floyd, I think was not good, and I don't think that uh, um, that the police should have that much power and that much latitude in the actions that they take, you know, for the crime of counterfeiting money, which the government does every day. You know, Floyd was guilty of fraud, in my eyes, but this guy here. If it is what it looks like, and he committed armed robbery beforehand, this again, that's a big thing. This is why I have to wait for more information. I couldn't find what they were chasing him for, or how this chase started. Maybe that was in the long press conference uh, that I didn't, I admittedly didn't watch. I just watched the highlights of the actual footage of the event. But uh, if, if that was the case, this guy was an armed robber, and then he fleed and tried to shoot the cops and these are going to end up being some dumb riots just going to come right out and say it and i don't think that they will be able to uh, gain the same traction that uh the 2020 summer of love got but hey they're doing their best the media is doing a bang up job trying to portray this uh in the most inflammatory light possible so with that said i will see you folks back here tomorrow Maybe. Actually, tomorrow's 4th of July. I'll probably skip tomorrow.